All right, hi internet. Um, I decided I'd make a quick video on how to um, prepare everything so that you can stream a DAW's audio as well as your own audio and get uh, a, a video where you've got a recording of yourself through a webcam as well. I probably wasted, not wasted, but four and a half hours today trying to figure this out. Um, so I thought I'd try and save all of you time. But as you hear right now, I'm talking, you can see me in the upper right hand corner of the visual and you can see Ableton here in front of me. And just to kind of show you the setup that I have and what it's capable of, and you can make sure that it's in line with what you're trying to do as well. So um, here we go. <clears throat> so Ableton's playing right now, I'm also talking. Um, you should be able to hear both. I'm gonna check this when I'm done making this video to make sure, um, but I'm pretty certain that you guys should be able to hear this. I can hear it right now through my headphones. Um, and this allows you to go ahead and go in depth on whatever session or track or piece you're working on and also uh, talk to the audience as well. So the ways that I set this up is a couple different things that are needed. First off, you need the actual uh, recording software and I'm using Bandicam. Uh, I've got two monitors so I'll just bring it over here. Um, this is free, the unregistered version. I think if you register it, it gets rid of the Bandicam.com uh, logo up top, but all the functionality is there even in the free version. Um, other than that, I also have uh, what's called Voice Meter, which is this right here. Um, this is what enables you to record your voice as well as the audio from Ableton. Um, well, and actually Bandicam uh, isn't able to record SEO drivers and this is what makes it possible for Bandicam to record that audio. Um, in addition, I also have a Scarlett 18i20 interface and there was just a little bit that I had to mess with here in order to make things work correctly as well, um, but I'll be going through all of that. So, um, first step is to go ahead and go to this website. If you just Google voice meter spelled right here with two E's virtual audio mixer it'll bring you here just follow the menus and download it it's totally a hundred percent free um, once you do that uh, the installation process literally just click 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 do all the defaults um, but once you do that you can go into the preferences of Ableton or whatever DAW you're using you're still going to use an SEO driver type but for audio device, uh, again here, there's my actual interface, but I'm actually sending everything to voice meter virtual ASIO right here. So select that. Um, then in voice meter itself, uh, this is the menu or the screen that you'll see. Hardware input here, this is where I'm actually putting in the input of my microphone. I have uh, uh, condenser mic going into my 18i20 into the first input and here is where I'm telling this virtual uh, device um, where my microphone is actually coming from. So hardware input, use your interface or whatever you're using for your input of your microphone. Um, second hardware input, I actually have uh, not selected anything, um, but you can remove as well um, that works fine and then third we have virtual input and as you see here VB audio voice meter uh, bio um, you have to make sure that that lines up with a uh, voice meter here if for some reason um, this has something else selected it's not going to work but it defaulted to this to me so I assume it'll do the same for you so what this means is that this is receiving all of the audio from my microphone. This is receiving all of the audio from my DAW, Ableton in this case. And then here is where you're actually selecting the um, virtual outs. So for A1, I selected my actual interface. So when I turn up the gain on the volume or the headphone monitoring or anything, um, I'm going to hear um, a down a mix of both 
my Ableton as well as my microphone in. Um, in addition, I'm also creating a second out that I'm sending to MME speakers via HD audio. Now, I'm not actually using those speakers at all, but what that's doing is it's sending a copy of the same signal into Windows default uh, audio driver that it has. Um, I know a lot of other people I've seen, MME like Realtek, Realtek HD audio, um, things like that. Um, either way, you wanna send it back down a path that Windows created um, or is expecting that leads nowhere. Um, you're only doing that into, in order to facilitate recording with Bandicam. So here um, on Bandicam, uh, you just select your recording mode. I have it recording a section of my desktop and in video, um, again, you have all your webcam settings you need to have correctly so you can actually see yourself in the upper right hand corner. This is the actual size of the window of your video. This is a position. It's pretty self-explanatory. But if you go into sound, this took me a while to figure out. And it's frustrating at how simple the answer is, but um, you know, hopefully you guys won't have to deal with that. So primary sound device is the speakers via HD audio. So even though, as you can see behind it, on a voice meter, we're sending audio to both my interface as well as this dead end of speakers via HD audio, Bandicam is going to record everything that we're sending to that dead end speakers via HD audio. At the same time, it's also sending all the audio to my interface. So while I'm talking and explaining things, I can hear the track, I can hear the music. If I play on my MIDI keyboard, um, I'll actually hear the samples being triggered while I'm talking. So it makes that whole entire process a lot more fluid and easier if you wanna make a video. Um, another thing is, and this is specific to um, if you have a Scarlett, uh, or a, sorry, a Focusrite uh, interface, um, but I'm sure there'll be uh, the equivalent for whatever type of interface you have, um, but just go into your mixer and make sure that you don't have routing messed up here. It should default to anything and everything that's correct. But one thing that was messing things up for me is I had 7, 8, and 9, and 10 uh, those channels as blue and I was treating them like all of the other outs um, for my interface. I found out from the internet that actually if I want to be able to control the volume of my headphone monitoring independent from my speaker monitoring, as in what's going through channels one and two, uh, you shift click these and that enables them to be at constant uh, full power or to be by hardware control. Um, to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but I was getting kind of desperate and I saw that this worked for a guy on a YouTube video, so I just did it and it worked. <laughs> But if you shift click it, it'll turn gray and that'll allow you to make it so that the output of your speaker monitors is at a different level or volume than your headphone monitors. So right now, audio is being sent to my interface. I just have the gain of my speaker monitors turned down, but I have the gain of my headphones actually turned at a reasonable volume. So I can hear everything through my headphones um, and everything's being recorded again through uh, Bandicam, again with these settings. And um, it's all being made possible by this virtual um, device that I have here. So again, it'll be a little give and take depending on your specific setup. Not everything's gonna line up, especially interfaces, but in general, this is how I got it to work. Um, so if you go through the exact process and it works for you, fantastic. If not, um, hopefully I talked about something that'll make you think about your setup and be like, oh, maybe that's why it's not working. But either way, um, I think this test video is over and I hope it was helpful to you guys. Let me know in the comments below if there are any issues you ran into and if I can help.